getting really stuck on writing this new scientific paper. I think I'll go get some inspiration from a book at this library. Oh look, this one's about Marie Curie. For this groundbreaking discovery of radium, I'd like to give credit to Pierre Curie, my husband, for assisting me in this incredible discovery, and Henri Becquerel, who discovered radioactivity just two years ago in 1896. Thank you. Whoa, that's actually Marie Curie. Hey, what year is it? What? What year is it? Uh, 1898, obviously. The Curies just discovered a new element this year. I'm gonna go talk to her. Hi, Marie Curie. Oh, hello there, your Yoganessian. What? How do you know me? I'm, like, from the future. I know. I've been having visions of you, and I summoned you here. Uh, okay. So, tell me all about yourself. Well, I was born on November 7th, 1867 in Warsaw, Poland. I tried to attend the University of Warsaw, but they only admitted men, even though I was a great student. So I moved to Paris in 1891 and attended Sorbonne University to study physics and mathematics. How about you? Wait, you said you were having visions, right? I assumed you already knew all about me. No, I don't. Tell me about yourself. Where you were born, your education, your work, that sort of thing. Okay, wait, now you're acting as if you're interviewing me like we're in front of some sort of camera. I don't know how far cameras have progressed in a hundred years, but right now they're so big you can't hide one anywhere. Okay, well, anyways, I'm a Russian nuclear physicist. I was born on April 14th, 1933. I graduated from the Moscow Engineering Physics Institute in 1956, and I work in Dubna, Russia at the Joint Institute for Nuclear Research. Jenner. Now if you want to discover a new element, you need to smash two together. We also are looking for new elements by using a machine called a cyclotron. It was invented by Ernest Lawrence, and it accelerates ions in a spiral motion using a magnet. And once the ion reaches speeds of about 10% the speed of light, it shoots it through a tube towards heavier atoms, hoping they'll fuse together. I can't imagine ever being able to move anything that fast. It's really interesting to see how far technology has advanced. Yes. The nucleus of an atom is made up of protons and neutrons, and each element is most stable with a specific number of each. If there are too little neutrons, the nucleus can break up more easily. So we need to accelerate an ion like calcium-48 with lots of neutrons so that the new larger atom has enough of them and is the most stable possible. Interesting. Heavier elements are so much more difficult to make than lighter ones. Pierre and I worked with uranium dioxide, and we separated it out into oxygen gas and pure uranium. We knew that uranium was very radioactive and unstable, so it would decay into a lighter element. It turned out that it decayed into something that was still radioactive, and after looking into it further, we realized that it was a new element, and we decided to call it radium. I thought our process was complicated, but after hearing about your cyclotron, it sounds like discovering radium was nothing. It must be incredibly rare for the ions to fuse, is that right? Definitely. The protons in the nucleus are positively charged, and since the same charges repel each other, there is a certain amount of energy needed for them to overcome that repelling force and be able to fuse. This is called the Coulomb barrier. In the 1970s, I invented a way to fuse atoms called cold fusion. The amount of energy needed for cold fusion is much closer to the Coulomb barrier making it two to three times more efficient than other methods. Cold fusion has helped the discovery of elements 104 through 113. Technology has definitely advanced a lot in 100 years. Currently, all elements up to 118 have been discovered. Element 118, Oganesson, 
is named after me, making me the only person alive today with their name on the periodic table. You worked with your husband to discover radium? Was he also a physicist? Yes, he was. He was also a professor. He died in 1906, and I took his teaching position and became the first woman to be professor of general physics in the Faculty of Sciences after taking Pierre's teaching position. I became the first woman to win a Nobel Prize when I won one for physics in 1903, and I won a second in 1911 for chemistry. I have no idea how I know any of that since it's currently 1898. Wow, I'll decide to ignore the fact that you just accurately read the future. I've learned a lot from you today. This conversation has been very helpful. I've learned a lot from you as well. Goodbye, Yuri.